Hello, friends. It's time for an update. Um, I, uh, I've been doing a lot of exercises lately. Um, OT and PT come every week, like two times each. So that's like four of the weekdays. We do like an hour of exercising. And, you know, they've continued to monitor my progress. And it, it does seem like my back and my neck are slowly, slowly getting stronger. It's nothing amazing or drastic, but positive improvement is much better than negative or, or not doing anything. Um, I kind of felt like my singing has gotten a little bit better as well. I definitely don't have much breath, so I feel kind of, I don't know if it's ashamed, but like you're supposed to be able to sing full phrases in one breath. And I'm generally singing like half a phrase at a time and taking breaths because I feel weird. But one thing that I think has been helping is the breathing exercise to do, which is um, apparatus here. It has like a steel ball inside. Um, I'm going to open it. And I'm using the smallest ball that there is. But um, you blow it and make the ball fly up. And it's actually supposed to help with coughing as well. Theoretically, anyway, it's supposed to help with phlegm, uh, like loosening it in your lungs or whatever. But I'm going to blow it once here and show you how like feeble I am. So I'm going to inhale deeply. i try that one more time. It's, that was very feeble. So that was maximum breath. I think we may or may not have clips here where I let Stacy or one of the kids blow on it and you can see like they're probably going to be much more impressive than I am. But that's me blowing and it, I feel like it has helped. And Stacy does remind me too because I don't like blowing to this thing. But, but I've been biting the bullet and, and doing that. Um, I also do these leg exercises. So I kind of cross my legs. Sometimes it's harder than others. And I cross them to get one leg up high. And then I see how far I can kick out the leg. So right now I can hold it there. Um, I think when I first started doing this, I can maybe get it like maybe here, a little bit more. But I feel like this is, you know, it's, it's good. It's not very high, but um, I try to do this like, I'll do sets of 20 twice a day or so, and I'll do both sides. And what I'm aiming for is, when I'm able to raise this leg until it is straight, which obviously is not doing now. I feel like when I move to the wheelchair, um, I could still raise one of my legs straight. Um, the other one was not quite there, but I feel like that will be a good indicator of when it is time for me to be closer to walking again. So that's the goal there, and you know, you guys can measure that angle, and maybe in future we'll do this again in another video, and we can see how much higher is my foot now. Um, oh, I do have to do the update on the hinkity pickety. We had a lot of good answers. In fact, I think my answer was actually not very good. So the question was, a horde of decapods is storming across your backyard. I think the best answer that we heard, or that people came up with, was crustacean infestation, which is not, I don't think that's the correct answer. I prefer crustacean invasion. But those are wonderful answers, and uh, we actually, yeah, it was really, I was surprised at the number of really good answers that people messaged me with. Um, another hickety pinkety that's very similar in the question, and just because I want to bring it up, that I'm going to give you guys to try to figure out for next time is, a horde of arthropods is storming across your backyard. It's a hickety pinkety. So um, if you don't know what a hickety pinkety is, you can watch the previous video where my children explained it very well, I believe. Um, <clears throat> and so we're going to go on a little excursion now, and we're going to go outside. And um, I won't tell you where it is, but you're going to find out in like two seconds. So we'll see you outside. We had a little excursion today. We exercised our constitutional right to vote. Uh, it's our first time voting as we just became citizens this past year. Um, see my little sticker here? Um, we voted early, obviously. Election day, I believe, is November 8th. I looked a bit foolish if that's not actually the correct date. Um, we got a sample ballot mailed to us. And Stacy studied it very studiously, and we did quite a bit of research, and we believe that we have casted, casted, informed vote today, and I implore all of you to do the same. Research your sample ballot, figure out which candidates and which amendments you're for or against. Obviously, this is if you're in America. Um, exercise your constitutional right to vote, like we did. So that was our voting excursion. These days, we really only go out of the house, well, I only go out of the house once, maybe twice a week. So that was excursion number two for the week. The other excursion, of course, is going to church. Um, now for some updates on medical things that I've been doing lately. There's been quite a few updates, actually. 
Uh, one kind of odd thing that has happened to my body is that after I had my port installed, uh, I noticed that underneath my right nipple, there was like this hard disc-like thing in there. Um, it feels like a big coat button, you know, like the, the buttons in a winter coat. So it's like a disc and it's flat. And I could feel it when I would like press like around the nipple. Oddly enough, uh, nobody I ask wants to feel it. Uh, not even really Stacy doesn't really want to feel it either. But uh, we called the surgeon about who installed the port. Because the port is here, the nipple's here. And the surgeon was like, no, we don't install anything at your nipple level. So it's definitely not from the surgery. So uh, we told the, our regular doctor and they sent me to have a, an exam. And uh, it's not the exam I had expected to get. But I went and I had to have a mammogram done. Um, that was an interesting experience. We went to the imaging center and we were in the waiting room. And the tech lady came to the door and she, like, she calls out my name like, Patient Kevin, come on down. Come on down. So I, uh, she's cheerful and I said to her, what are we playing for? And she said, I like to call it the booby prize. I thought that was very clever. But a mammogram is very unpleasant, and I guess women would know. But for men, it's really quite terrible. I mean, they take as much, uh, they call it breast tissue, as possible, and they shove it inside that sandwiching machine. And it's like, it's a lot. I was surprised how much, like I was looking at how much skin or whatever is squashed in that thing. And then they, uh, they go away because of the radiation. So like, they help push me into the machine, and they go away. And the first time they did it, um, I wasn't holding on to anything and my upper body is not strong. So my body was like falling away from the machine. And the only thing keeping me upright was all my fleshy things that were being squashed inside the sandwich thing. So that was very unpleasant. The second time I asked them if they could help me hug the machine first. So they put my hands around the machine and I held on it. It was much better. So if you ever have to do a mammogram and you don't have good upper body strength, ask the techs to help you hug the machine first because that would be less unpleasant. Uh, we also had some ultrasound um, of the area, and then um, they determined that it was like a benign growth that happens sometimes for people who are on a lot of medications. Um, and then they, we did a CT with contrast, well, with drinking contrast, but no IV contrast, just to see if there are any more of these growths in my body, and they didn't find any. So for now, we're not really concerned about the coat button. And lately it feels like it's smaller, but I don't know if that's because maybe I'm gaining a bit of weight as well. Because one thing I'm wondering is maybe I just never noticed this growth until I was so skinny that there was no muscle or anything and I could find it. Um, another medical procedure that we've had because of the coughing that I had from time to time is we went to see a lung specialist. And I don't mean to be mean, but it doesn't seem like the lung specialist is so much focused on what we told them. It seems like when you go see the lung specialist, all they want to do is test your breathing and see if you need a CPAP machine. So like, and we left, she scheduled me for, I had to do a sleep test where they gave me like a pulse oximeter on my finger that's connected to a wristwatch and then it monitors my oxygen levels all night. And I had a really, really terrible night of sleep. So I don't know what those results will look like. We see the lung specialist in a couple of weeks. So I'll give updates on that as well. And they want to do uh, uh, testing. Oh, and I've been doing these exercises. Oh, no, I talked about the exercises earlier. So those are the update of the medical uh, things that we've gone through recently. Um, I think that those will be all the updates for this week. And um, thanks, everyone, for watching. I hope you all have a safe and fun Halloween. And anybody who's in America, remember, for, don't forget to vote.